Okay, let's begin. I think someone is feeling the heat of the cold uh, and chillness, and someone is feeling the you know <laughs> pain of Christ. But then, yes, let's wish for the world to sing the song of peace and let's begin the show. Uh, welcome to the uh, poetic evening with Fertel West. I welcome you all, my honorable and uh, uh, esteemed luminaries uh, present over here. I don't know, Dias. Uh, uh, and I uh, graciously welcome on behalf of the entire team of Fertel Brands. I would like to call upon our guest poets uh, who, who are joined first time with us. Uh, they are none other than I mean Garima Shudan Kapoor and Gopal Purdani. Uh, Garima Shudan Kapoor is from Bahrain. She is a English teacher. She is a well-known writer in Hindi and English as well. Uh, she is an expressive poet, I would say. <laughs> you know, very expressive, very, I mean, lively. And about you, ma'am. Here he goes. Thank you so much, sir. For giving me uh, this wonderful opportunity. Namaste, salam, hello to one and all. My name is Garima Sudan. I am from Patna, India. I live in Bahrain. I love to write poetry in English and Hindi. I have inherited this passion of writing from my father, Mr. Gurpal Singh Sudan. Today I will be dedicating the poem uh, that is in my mother tongue, Hindi. Uh, it is dedicated to all men. Yesterday was uh, International Men's Day. So my poem in Hindi is as follows. The title of the poem is Ha Sakt Hu Ki Mard Hu. Ha Sakt Hu Ki Mard Hu. Par Jazbaton Ka Samandar. भी है मेरे अंदर जज्बातों का समंदर भी है मेरे अंदर आंसू भी उस समंदर में गोते खाए जूझते हैं पर कहीं अकेले मैं उन्हें बहा लेता और कई बार उन्हें पलकों के दरमियां छिपा लेता हूं हां सख्त हूं कि मर्द हूं जिम्मेदारियों से घिरा हूं जमीन से जुड़ा हूं वक्त का मुलाजिम हूं वक्त का मुलाजिम हूँ, जमीर पर अड़िग हूँ, हाँ सख्त हूँ कि मर्द हूँ, भावनाएँ दिल में समेट कर रखता हूँ, भावनाएँ दिल में समेट के रखता हूँ, खुलकर इन्हें अधिकतर बयां नहीं कर पाता, मेरे आत्म सम्मान पर कोई घात करे, तो लाज़मी है कि सिहर उठता हूँ मैं, हाँ सख्त हूँ कि मर्द हूँ। सम्मान और प्यार दोनों की चाह और उम्मीद रखता हूँ। सम्मान और प्यार दोनों की चाह और उम्मीद रखता हूँ। हाँ सख्त हूँ कि मर्द हूँ। देख नहीं सकता तुम्हें दुखी होते हुए तो नाराज होता हूँ। परेशानियों की सिलवटों को तुम्हारे चेहरे पर ना आने दूँ। परेशानियों की सिलवटों को तुम्हारे चेहरे पर ना आने दूं मुसीबत छोटी हो या हो बड़ी मुसीबत छोटी हो या फिर हो बड़ी कि तुम घबराओ नहीं कि उन दिक्कतों को सुलझाने में मैं साथ देता हूं हल्की फुल्की आंधियों की बात ना करो हल्की फुल्की आंधियों की बात ना करो अपने परिवार के लिए तूफानों का सामना करने का हौसला रखता हूँ, हाँ सख्त हूँ कि मर्द हूँ, जिम्मेदारियों से घिरा हूँ, जमीन से जुड़ा हूँ, हाँ सख्त हूँ कि मर्द हूँ। Thank you so much. Wow, wow, बहुत खूब मैं सख्त हूँ पर मर्द हूँ या बिल्कुल सही बात है. Thank you so much. <laughs> That was a great dedication and who would be you know. Uh, you know, it is very difficult. Sometimes, you know, we, we always blame, you know, uh, the and the other opposite gender uh, of uh, atrocities that they are being competed. But, you know, the, the, there might be at the least, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, not a significant person, but then it, they are highlighted such a way. But, you know, uh, yes, it's something, uh, beautiful dedication, beautiful tribute to the men, men manhood. <laughs> 
I thought <laughs> she, she, had, she articulated very well a sense of delivery and engagement. Exactly. With exactly. Maculates. F. Thank you so much. Many thanks. Yeah. That was something great. And if you have a second one, you could present, ma'am. Okay. The this poem would be in English. Uh, this is my first poem in English. Uh, the title of the poem is A Dream to Ponder. A dream to ponder, a dream that persists within, a dream to conquer, a dream to live in. Why so many barriers? Why such insecurities? Why so many barriers? Why such insecurities? Why this fake mindset? Why this fake mindset? Why such superiorities? Why not we break those egoist wall that tear us within and create our downfall? We talk big things here and there. Yes, we do, but we don't realize. We talk big things here and there, forget to follow them everywhere, holding the pride holding the pride of knowing too much. I compare them. I compare them with people who know little, who know little, who know less, but are rich in kindness and carry their brilliance with their humbleness. I dream the innocence imbibed in their sharp mind. I dream their innocence imbibed in their sharp mind and cunningness and hypocrisy to vanish that make them blind. I dream the acceptance they should feel towards their mistakes. I dream their acceptance they should feel towards their mistakes. The polluted thoughts the, and emotions they create the polluted thoughts and the emotions they create. I dream the openness to flow, to be more understanding and mature with everyone as we grow. I dream a lot of things. I dream a lot of things with a sigh as I know they are blurred and too high. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, I would like to answer, ask, uh, what is the role of the po poet? Uh, anyone, if you that? could, what is the role of the poet? I mean, this is this poem is very uh, aptly, you know, talks about that, you know, something, you know, Latin career. The perception I is the, the perce yeah. I understood. I understood. The perception is particular to the individual soul. Because when I express it myself, I see all humans as soul. So poetry is the voice of the soul, expressing itself in myriad ways according to the growth or the de development and the experience of the poet. Uh, so, so one man would like the mystic like Rumi, somebody else would like satire, somebody else would have a social conscience. And going back to the lady, I thought she was emotive, she was passionate, she was heartfelt, and she reminded me of Unmesh with her repetitions. Exactly. You know? Yeah. The poet that's is why I say, to that's why I said say many things, actually. Word. The yeah. poet wants, poetess wants to say many things, actually, the superiority, the fake mindset, the inferiority, and uh, the, there are people who know, who claim that they know too much and they are forgetting the morals. They're forgetting how to talk to the other person. And I compare them with those people who are not very fluent in English, who are not very fluent in their education, but they, they are brilliant from here. They are brilliant from here and they know how to talk. They, they know how to behave, how to treat others with kindness and humbleness. I keep them here. The intellect with knowing too much and they are forgetting the morals, the values, I keep them very low. That is the so that message. Was your, so that was your pain that it, that was expressed through yes, your pain. That is the message from, uh, through my first poem. Thank you so much. She wants to convey a lot of bitterness. 
She has a lot of bitterness about the world. She's facing the hypocrisy, the superiorities. You know, she wants to bring them out by this way. Exactly. Exactly. And she gives... Gopal Burdani, sir. Welcome, sir. Pehli bar ap manch pe aai. Aapka, please mic on kariyega. Please kindly turn on your mic. Gopal Burdani, sir. Sir, kindly turn on your mic, Gopal, sir. Kind. Sir, kindly turn on. Oh, yeah. I'm Colonel Gopal Purdani. I am from Delhi, and I served in the army and uh, for three bars, and uh, I've been writing since very long. My fourteen books have been uh, uh, published. And uh, uh, now I'm writing only the four liners and two liners. Mm -hmm. Four liners is all in Hindustani. That means Urdu and Hindi mix. I will narrate uh, meeting you. I written a two liner two days back. That is, ke khush naseeb hum hai, jo aap se mulaqat hui, baad muddat ek insaan se mulaqat जो उबर आते हैं दरअसल जवाबों की कोई उम्र नहीं होती जवाब दिया तो खत्म हो गया सवाल के बाद सवाल भी पैदा होते रहते हैं और मैंने एक बार अपने जीवन साथी के लिए लिखा था कि मेरे बाद भी तुम अपने को यूं ही संवारे रखना मेरे बाद भी तुम अपने को यूं ही संवारे रखना कुछ अरमान पूरे कर लेना कुछ अरमान कुंवारे रखना वक्त रहता है तो तूफान भी आते हैं उठसी हुई लहरों के लिए मजबूत किनारे रखना ये एक मैसेज लेकिन जिंदगी में मजबूरियां कई ऐसी आती हैं कि इंसान समझ नहीं पाता जैसे कि नशा शराब का आज बेअसर क्यों है कि पूरी बोतल तो पी ले कुछ भी नहीं हुआ सफर जिंदगी का इतना मुक्त सर क्यों है जिंदगी इतनी छोटी क्यों है आपकी बेवफाई से हम अनजान ना थे फिर भी ये दिल आपका घर क्यों है आप ही बने रहते हो इस दिल में हालांकि मैं जानता हूं कि आपकी वफाई कितनी बड़ी है तो एक बार कई बार होता है पर एक बार ऐसा मेरे साथ हुआ कि मुझे ये कहना पड़ा बताना पड़ा अपने साथी को कि मेरी आंखों से तेरे क्यों बरसे आंसू जाने किस बात पर आज तरसे आंसू हमने पूरी कोशिश से बांध रखा था लेकिन पलकों से कैसे सर के आंसू पलकों से फिर भी निकल आए मैं एक आजाद देश का बसिंदा हूं और एक सामी अफसर होने की वजह से कई बार फखर हो जाता है कहता है कि अपनी आजादी का पूरा अधिकार मांगता हूं मेरे हस्से का अपना संसार मांगता हूं लेने देने का सिलसिला है ये जिंदगी जितना देता हूं उतना सा प्यार मांगता हूं थैंक यू सर बहुत खूब एक सर मैंने ये सारे माहौल को देख के ब्रह्मांड की तरफ देख के आसमान की तरफ देख के लिखा था कि किस कदर बेबसी से तक रहा है आसमान आसमान देख रहा है लेकिन कर कुछ नहीं सकता किस कदर बेबसी से तक रहा है आसमां नजर हर शय पर है पर जुबान पर कुछ भी नहीं इस धरती पर है हर बशर की खुशी आसमां पर कुछ नहीं आसमां कुछ भी नहीं तो ये फोर लाइन थे उर्दू में इनको कथा या रुबाई कहते हैं लेकिन मैंने आजकल यही शुरू किया है कि 
دنیا کا فرسٹ ٹائم نہیں ہے لمبا لمبا سننے کا میں نے ناول بھی لکھے ہیں شارٹ اسٹوریز بھی لکھی ہیں ابھی میں لکھتا ہوں شارٹ اسٹوری نہیں لکھتا منی اسٹوری لکھتا ہوں ایک پیج کی ڈیڑھ پیج کی دو پیج کی آدھے پیج کی وہ لکھ رہا ہوں اور پوئٹری جو لکھ رہا ہوں وہ چار لائن یا ٹو لائن بہت سندر اور بہت اچھے سے آپ نے شاعری کی بہت ہی اچھی لگی ایک ایک چیز Thank you so much for joining and giving us honor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Thank you, sir. You will be able to get your money and your money. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's move on to the, our next poet, he, who he considers himself to be, I think we also, we also <laughs> love him to be a love poet, Dr. Jahangir Alam Rustam. Greetings from Bangladesh. Uh, I am happy to meet you with this poetry festival. Okay, I, I am reading first poem from my book, Charms of Love, this one. Nice. It's a world famous book. The name of the poem, Under the Open Sky. One day in the late afternoon under the open sky, when the cloud kissed the ground to sustain a tie, I was standing for some time when there is fresh weather bloom in no time. Enjoyed alone at an ever exciting moment Forgetting all the earthly things, underwinding from grief and lament. I found and felt myself as a solace to a bystander, kissed someone alone I was staying from afar. Coloring mind's sleep, would she stay with me? Pruned unsung song like a bumblebee, sometimes to whom I would sit and go zip. Sunted or soothing speech as a sweetened or steep. What a suitable moment would I pass away, like an arranged honeymoon on a beach of a bountiful bay? Would I express and exchange my beloved hidden speech? Sometimes I lost away with someone who sensed the long outed peace. After gaining sense, I found myself. Standing under the open sky, when everything remains intact without feeling shy. Thank you. And my second poem uh, from another book, Dream of Love. The name of the poem is Lying over the sky. One day when I was sleeping on the lap of a cozy sky, when the shimmering moon was gossiping with me to make a tie, the stars were dazzling with their multicolored gray. The queen of the sky, a fairy, lay beside me just after the day. Some fairies were supplying cool air by decorated handy fan. Some were dancing with dresses 
of multicolored tan. They stood in front of me with some magical fruits and wine. Some of them hoisted with heavenly fruits and wine. One was singing in prone tune with an ultra modern instrument, creating an amazing situation by a sprinkling perfume scent. The amazing place was decorated with multicolored light and wild flower. The queen of the fairies was hugging me with her blinking eyes with her bar. After breaking the ever dreaming dream, I was alone and insane. I fell and found myself on a broken chair only with a writing pen. Thank you. And my last third and last poem from another world famous book, Shadow of Love, this one, Shadow of Love. The name of the poem, I Find You. You bloom in the star-studded sky as a wild, beautiful flower. Over the plant with a buzzing voice as an intoxicated singer. You often glaze in the far sky as a dazzling meteor. I often meet you in the rims of a sparkling star. Sometimes I swim in the tune produced from you. I grow love and pleasure in your lovely view. What a wonderful girl in my life who sings in the psyche mind. No other queen or fairies, but your beauties I can find. You are with me. You live in my heart where I go. I hear your eloquent species around me where I don't know. Thank you. Wonderful, sir. Always wonderful. I would like, I would request you to share your book links in the chat box and whoever wants to share, you could share, share so that then other poet could follow. And it could, yes. you know, also yes. your social network and you know, whatever you from. Lantern care, yeah, again, I'll come back to you. And uh, after that, you will go to Gargi, ma'am. Okay, Lantern, it's Mike is yours. His titles are so full of love, just the titles alone and the color, they're very passionate books. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jandi. Revelations. The iridescence of the moon has no brush, yet she paints the night with a luminous glow. The stars have no voice for magical songs, yet they sing in the stillness of silence. The warmth of the sun kissing my cheeks awakens within my ancient smile like one raising Lazarus to life. Nature can be so beautiful. It commands serenity from my lips, makes the heart graceful like a ballerina. No more the dark smells pervading my loneliness and guilt. The light of your luster washes my breath within a thousand rays of glimmer. Took me a while to comprehend, but you have raised me like Lazarus once again. Attempting to transform my own nature, the sweet nicotine rebelled within my sodden state. The toxic fumes of surreal experiments only hastened my demise. Yet you came in my predicament, shielding me from destruction. Now, whenever I think of you, my face glows like fireflies and the heavens blush, even as the dark night whispers bird songs in the magnificence of the soul. Mesmerized by the breaking of waves, I listen to the symphony of the wind, of how she speaks of time past and whispering dreams of the pain of millennial sorrows the tenderness of love. I lie on the beauty of twilight, enchanted by the light of perennial entities which kiss my soul. The night sky holds my gaze. We dance on the crest of rolling tides as the wind continues or in illumining conversations. She speaks of the magic of smiles, of the miracle of sunrise, 
and the moon kisses my cheeks as I bow in sacred gratitude. She sings of the glories of man, of the undaunted courage of a woman's sacrifice, and my heart becomes a field of prayer. She talks of life struggles, of how light shines in Jerusalem, even when the shadows are dense, that we can only measure the darkness by the rays of an effulgence we once knew. I listen, and my tears become a raiment for the beloved. Have wine, she says. Go forth and love, for are not your, not your desires the same adversity that will fashion you into gold? And how shall you laugh if you know no weeping? Be patient, for the weaving of the inner alchemist never ceases. She spins and spins a zillion revolutions until every indiscretion is wiped clean and the yarn returns to its state of grandeur. You are that yarn. You are that grandeur. Even though you may not feel it, I can see a trillion candles glittering in your coal. Then the waves subsided and the wind blowed softly, gently caressing my spirit. The fire of my essence burned with the setting sun. Fear not, she said, before becoming silent. I am with you always, even unto the edge of eternal time. Lantern Carrier, thank you. My God, what a love. brilliant imagery with beautiful metaphors, similes, all, you know. <laughs> I mean, lovely poem, <laughs> lovely poem, Lantern. Hey, thank you, Doctor. Thank you. <laughs> Doctor <My> God. <laughs> thank you, sir. It was a very lovely poem, Lantern, sir. Very, very resonating and very, very romantic poem. And very lovely too. <laughs> but it was very thank nice. you, thank you so much. So salt staring poems, you know. Salt staring. <laughs> yes. Romantic for the higher love. <laughs> Not human love. How do you it's compose good. so lengthy way love poems? So I wonder. No, it actually the spiritually, uh, you know, um, right. Right. Can I be... I yes. Please, please go ahead. Thank you, President Sir, for inviting me in this platform of luminaries from across the world. Today, I would like to present my poem entitled Diabetes. Don't touch sweets in any form, from a tiny square of sugar to those large sugar flowing candies or those bars of chocolates sweetly arranged in trays. Pluck off that sweet tooth that laps the rasgullas, ice creams, jellies, cold rings, cakes, cookies, caramel custard, blissfully enjoying in solitary confinement when none's at home or all asleep in a pool of boundless solitude. What to eat then? Those simple, plain, sweetless food? You mean the utterly boiled stuff, which isn't hot and sweetie? Or those newly researched sugar-free products available in all brands? Sweets and ice creams, cakes and biscuits? But the real taste of sugar can't ever be replaced by sugarless sweets. How I love sweets. I can't ever pluck off my 32 white sparkling sweet teeth that craze for sweets only, be it at morn six or at dinner nine. How I love sweets, like a moon cannot be separated by the moonlight, the sun without its sunshine, the rose without its fragrance, the tree without its shade, a mother without her affection. I wish to be born as an ant that would feast on sweets, up to my heart's content, without any rules, restrictions, norms, without any do's and don'ts, is and should. Man lives in a society, yet exists in an island of undistinguished enigmas. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That's a very funny one. <laughs> I could watch everyone's, you know, sways, you know, and everyone was smiling and they're enjoying it, you know, they're relishing the sweet, you know, it's sweetness. It, it you. Diabetes, exactly, you know? exactly my words, exactly my words. I'm so sorry to interrupt here. 
but uh, her poem was so sweet that everyone you know they everyone was smiling as if they are enjoying and relishing the different types of sweets in front of them <laughs> thank you so much thank you. Kargi, it was a lovely poem i enjoyed it very very much very much with my heart and you know the recitation to and the rendition to has yeah. changed you know compared to other you know it fixed you know previous ras malai with love <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I, I was expecting the. I was expecting like you know the lantern kind of uh, you know poem you know like spacecraft. You know always you know philosophical spirituality. And, uh, <laughs> in fact, I just uh, just edited a book on food. Uh, food <laughs> anthology is on food poems. Yeah. And I miss I missed you, Gargi. I think next time we have a sequel to the book, you'll be there. Thank so you. food, Thank you, food brings back. So and and to want to be an ant, yes, the ant can have to be take some sugar. You see, when we are able to, you know, when we are able to go into another species, you know, from the human species, we are able to connect. You have connected to another species, and that is so important because uh, during this pandemic, we have realized that we are not the only people around. You know, there are many other creatures, many other people around us. And Absolutely. we have to give our love to it. Yeah. Thank you so much for your lovely poem. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> yes, your poem was in the engagement. You have been able to convey. You know, you conveyed it to the reader. You you held us. It was spellbound. You know, it's engaging right. to the reader to convey yes. what you were trying. The sweetness. You know. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for the kind appreciation. You made my day out of you. Thank you so much. Actually, she has chosen a very nice subject. You know why? Indeed, Eating indeed. is one of everyone's weakness. Whether <laughs> it is sweetness or salty, everyone would like to would love to have. So she has grabbed it that attention from the start till the end. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, really nice. a poetic, uh, and, uh, a poetic expression. And Dr. Jahangir from Bangladesh, you know, I also belong to Bangladesh. My father was born in Dhaka. So I have written about it to so the Rashagulla and the Rashmalai and the Kheer Kadam and all those, you know, Bengali's mouth was watering listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Didi, I invite you to uh, visit uh, Dhaka. And uh, Thank you so I will, much. I would love to. I will try to... Uh, 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 give you the appointment with uh, Rasogulla and uh, Malai. Yes. Okay. That, would, okay. that would really be wonderful. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to our next poet who is so humbly sitting over there you know, and watching and he's not putting a smile. I think he's smiling within, but he's he has, he is so <laughs> humble and lovely being. Rakesh Chandra, Rakesh Chandra sir. Yeah, Sorry. welcome sir. Good evening, Prasanna ji. Am I audible? Yes. Perfect, sir. Perfect. perfect. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, your program is really uh, wonderful, and I I really wait for this program. Many times I cannot make it, but any time I can, I, I do join it. So, very good poems by Gargi ji and other poets, respectable poets. So. My uh, poems uh, belong to some different, uh, you see, field, uh, you can say. The first poem is The Song Celestial. I am a beautiful lotus flower, singing a song in full bloom. Can you hear me? I am a colorful bird flying high in the sky, crooning in gay abandon. I am a glossy green leaf dancing to the tune of gentle breeze. Is anybody listening to my song? I am a fluttering honeybee and I'm moving around the flowers, seducing them with my humming song. Mother Earth is in thrall of music divine, sung by the nature in mellifluous tones. Everybody is absorbed in the song Celestia. My other poem is, my dreams are ageless. 
the height of my dreams is immeasurable and my flights of fancy are boundless i want to make a brief sojourn on cloud 9 and climb the peak of my ambitions yet unfulfilled i am in no hurry i count my age in numbers only the span of life is very short and we spend our time in making both ends meet there is no time to look and enjoy the world around but the dreams of my life must come true whatever be the number of years our dreams are ageless beyond any doubt wonderful sir wonderful wonderful so certain and so sublime <laughs> moving on to the next poet molly joseph ma'am yes sir yes go ahead go ahead sir. go ahead go ahead wonderful Me? thank you thank you so much london go ahead sir yeah. now i was saying it's just beautiful and sublime is the right word because the first song is like the bhagavad gita isn't it it's it is in fact the song celestial of shri krishna talking to his disciple arjuna and the gentleman's words are laced with spiritual messages all the way through so uh, it's lofty and sublime i, I really uh, appreciated it thank you thank you so much sir Yeah. Let's move on to our next poet, who is who received a you know <laughs> national prize for her work. Her name is you know very prestigious. Uh, you know, Dr. Mali Joseph, <laughs> inspirational always. Uh, Thank you, dear president. Yeah. Thank you. I'm like listening to all the poems of the day. It is wonderful. Each one coming up with a perspective of his or her own. and that to put in such a charming way yes uh this week as uh, prasanna put it was very important for me because i could release one of my newest books that is the voice over the waves i think it's not clear here because the print uh, voice over the waves this is my 17th book of poems one seven yes and then by god's grace i had been to delhi to receive uh, uh, the best children story book of the year for my story book adventures of billu dilu and thrillu in fact those two are my grandsons billu and dilu from 6 year old 7 year old children so conversing with them i ferret out objects that interest children uh, i mean a psyche children psyche and their imagination okay that was all by god's grace things go on fine and the day before yesterday it was international men's day the much touted women's day is praised by everyone everyone has a poem on a woman yeah of course it's well and good but why can't we write on men so this is a poem that i am writing for men and especially the ideal kind of men whom you adore that is it purish man grows manly when he shoulders up bravely the cause of the weak the needy above all when he stands to safeguard the woman he loves even when she is maligned and her dignity is stolen when he stands to safeguard the woman he loves even when she is maligned and her dignity is stolen true love isn't it more a matter of the mind than the body see the kind of a purish saint joseph was the husband of mother mary so rare a gem of purish uphold the honor of his wife when the apocalypse comes from above to mary she is going to conceive incredulous she asks how can it happen i have not known man yet she obeys bears the son of god how her man joseph shoulders it up saving her honor he guides her 
and guards her, takes her away to show her safety. In peace, she gives birth to the Son of God, Jesus. Purush is he, Joseph, to uphold the dignity of a woman, a mother. True love transcends mere physical plane. How we live in a world where acid is thrown onto the face of one's beloved by a man caught up in a mania of doubt, of self-possession, obsession. Many a Purusha for time attacks and kills his beloved, so insecure, possessive in her love. No, true Purish arises as the redeemer, protector of the weak, be it the woman, the dispossessed, the suppressed, the exploited. Yes, Purish redeems the earth and universe, not allowing it into, not allowing it to fall into disgrace. Yes, Purush redeems the earth and universe, not allowing it to fall into disgrace. Thank you, dear. That is my point. Wonderful. Uh, it reminds me, or sometimes, it, uh, you know, I, uh, the, mo the moment it reminds me of your poem once you dedicated to your father, ma'am, I have gone through it. I mean, it's like yeah. two years back or one year back, I read. Yeah. It's so yeah. wonderful, you know, you're touching up on all the faces and you know, my old memories and, you know, exactly. it was something simply beautiful. And this poem, so, it's, I, if, uh, if I'm not wrong, it, you have submitted it for Purush. Purush, <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of that anthology that is, you know, <laughs> it is yet to be released. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Molly's poems comes from a heart and a cheerfulness. There's such positive qualities, the heart, the goodness, the cheerfulness. It's yeah. a blessing. And, yeah. and that's what I note every time you speak, the cheerfulness and the sweet simplicity. Such a blessing. Thank you. I'm so humbled. Lantern. Lantern. Ionic blessing. <laughs> it's a lovely poem, Molly, ma'am. You know, you Thank watched out so well the superiority of the maze and how she takes it. It is very well portrayed in your poem. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Jennifer. Lovely. Jennifer. <laughs> <Jennifer. laughs> okay. Anybody? <laughs> Joan or Shalini, ma'am. Mike is yours. <laughs> A beautiful singer who, you know, uh, rendered us mes mesmerized in last week. You know, that was, you know, Shalini, ma'am. So very good evening to everybody from here in India. It's now evening our time. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful evening today. And absolutely wonderful poems, mesmerizing. What beautiful imagery. I think I'm, one is just lost in this uh, maze of imagery. And I am so excited to uh, meet somebody or listen to somebody who is from Patna because I also belong to Patna. So I was born and brought up there. So just, I mean, it is absolutely exciting to meet somebody else, a fellow poetess from Patna. It's and my honor, ma'am, it's my honor. I'm so happy to meet you. And uh, I'm really happy, you know, that the Patna always has, uh, is a very, I have a very, very soft corner because it's a place where I grew up and the place where my parents were. So it's always been home to me. So, and uh, thank you for all your wonderful poems. In fact, each and everyone's poems were absolutely marvelous and they were so touching. Very, very beautiful. And thank you all so very much. So, um, I'll read a poem in, uh, in English and uh, <clears throat> my attempt at writing a poem in Hindi too. So <clears throat> the, this poem of mine has been inspired by a friend of mine who is going through a very terrible time. So it's about hope. 
it's about uh, the bliss which we all carry within so <clears throat> one <clears throat> one second so uh, this poem uh, is called effulgence the moon eclipsed the night pitch black starless lustreless my life snuffed out my eyes searching in dismal alleys chasing illusions imaginations fleeing shadows a vain attempt to trace the thin tell tale spirals of a vain attempt to trace the thin tell tale spirals of smoke from fire long extinguished sadness slowly seeping into my newest crevices of me an obsidian shroud with dawn tiptoed a ray of light an angel a flame of pure white inched closer and closer to me rekindled my heart's cavern a sparkle of gleam lit my tired eyes endless nights of silent screams endless nights of silent screams dissolved through cracks of my mind's window a brilliant smile flashed within like lightning in the cesspool of still waters a burst of radiance when you touched my drooping spirit lotus buds began to bloom again in the quagmire of murky waves you said dearly beloved i was with you each moment your soul's invincible effulgence with love's warm nectaring embrace a rain of compassion holding you with pearls of light to show you the light and bliss what was is and will always be yours that light that is eternal thank you lofty and sublime you're using so many of the words of the mystic you've entered my territory effulgence <laughs> and nectar and all those fancy, fancy words pearls of light we use those words but quagmire of murky waves you know that's a beautiful you know phrase very beautifully expressed very beautiful <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much very humble thank you thank you for recite and uh, this poem that i'm going to recite actually it's uh, my attempt at writing a poem in hindi and it's actually uh, rupali had put up a photograph of this uh, vegetable vendor and uh, this this uh, touched me so deeply within so it's crystallized into this poem so iska shirshak hai sabziyon ka khela बाजार के एक कोने में बिल्कुल अलग सा तुम्हारी ताजी सब्जियों का आकर्षक ठेला बाजार के एक कोने में सॉरी बाजार के एक कोने में बिल्कुल अलग सा तुम्हारी ताजी सब्जियों का आकर्षक ठेला so sorry i think i don't know what's happening i did the alexa is just happening give me a moment mm -hmm. somewhere i'm so sorry forgive me uh my alexa is picking up uh thinking that i'm calling <laughs> it was interesting interrupt it was <laughs> yes. completely fine so, yes every time i started to speak alexa piped up she can't understand what i'm asking her <laughs> and so please forgive me for this uh interruption so mai fir se shuru karti hu bazaar ke ek kone mein bilkul alag sa 
तुम्हारी ताजी सब्जियों का आकर्षक ठेला गोल चमकते बैंगन मटर आंखों को सुकून पहुंचाने वाले हरे पालक लाल लुभावने टमाटर मूली गाजर आलू के ढेर उन सब्जियों का अभी अभी तोड़ लाई हो जैसे आ और मोल भाव करते ग्राहक और इस हरियाली मध्य तुम्हारा उदास विरान मुरझाया चेहरा थकी आंखों में वेदना के सैलाब सूखी टहनियों के हाथ खुश्क होठ जाने कितनी तकलीफ छुपाए बैठी तुम हजारों सवाल के जवाब ढूंढती रही मैं तुम्हारी मायूस झुर्रियों की लकीरें बहुत महंगी है तुम्हारी सब्जियां कौन खरीदेगा और मैं सोचने लगी कैसे करते हैं मोल भाव ये लोग ये ऐशो आराम में रहने वाले लोग क्या कभी नहीं बदलेगी इनकी मनोदशा सहसा तुम्हारे चेहरे पर एक नर्म सी मुस्कान खिल उठी माँ जी क्या दू मैं घर लौट आई ढेर सारी सब्जियां और तुम्हारी सहनशील मुस्कुराहट लिए हुए थैंक यू बहुत सुंदर तरीके से आपने प्रस्तुत किया और वेरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुल थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू शालिनी थैंक यू सो मच उटीज you know from from things that we see that we connect to and it's so important that we include people we've left behind so many people we've left behind so many and we we talk you know we have forgotten people these are all forgotten people thank you so much only through us we can come out you know i know so and much. this you know this uh, look the look of uh, this uh, vegetable vendor was somehow the other so heart rending It was so sad, you know, to see that. How many of us even, you know, look beyond the vegetables we are buying? We don't, and look into, you know, take a peek into the lives that they lead and how uh, troubled they are. And yet, you know, there's always a smile on their face. Yeah. And that's why you're called a poet, ma'am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Na. Thank you, Gary. It's so nice to uh, be here. Landron, you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> From the higher standpoint, whatever we see or don't see is Sri Krishna. So the lady is right; it's it's in everything. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful. That's lovely. <laughs> Let's go to the next poet. Uh, I think uh, we could call upon Joan. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, the poem. The, actually, I would like to say thank you, everyone, because this is not just a simple day today. It's I've been uh, on the background. I've been into little kind of battling family issue, but some surprises happen when we need it the most. Yours truly won the first prize in. Uh, Migrant and Refugee Poetry Competition, and that is the poem that I will going to recite for you all. I hope you will like it. The title is "I'm So Into You." You are my morning dew that sparks with hope and enchantment, and I miss you. I miss you like I miss the smell of the smoke from the burning leaves in the backyard. You are the squishing of the broomstick that clears the rumbles and crumbles in my spirit. That fact makes me desire you. I desire you like the way I desire to jump naked 
to the falls in the heart of the forest where nature is my audience. You are a reflection that allowed me to see that a dirty secret is extraordinarily sacred. And for that, I long for you even more. I long for you as I long for a long drive from north to south, from east to west, a crazy exploration that I aspired to conquest. You are the goosebump that crawl on my nape, that blush my cheek and crave for mm, a passionate kiss. Oh, how I really want you. I want you as I wanted to dive into the ocean of your affection and swim along with my adoration and devotion. You are the angel in disguise that entitles me not to be somebody, but to be someone worthy to cherish and to be loved. You are, your perception makes me adore you. I adore you like I adore the scent of a freshly mowed grass, the sight of the rainbow after the rain and the aroma of freshly wooed coffee. You are the stream that steam of fondness, a vapor of sensuality and calmness. I love you. I love you despite the heavy clouds that carry the rain of pollution. The more I swallow my thoughts on you, the more I am indeed imagination of being with you. The more I realize that life is full of masquerades where here and there are just anywhere, everywhere where life and death are a face of a new face that we all have to face. Yes. We are so in love like a pair of doves escaping from a free, fair ride to taste the unfair life. We both agreed to hold on together for whatever lies ahead. Sera, sera, my love. I am so into you like you are so into me. We are two pieces in a pot, the jugs in a jacket, but yet still, you are not mine but you are always in my heart and mind. I will wait for you like the way you patiently waited for me. Then, then, then let's dance the music that only our hearts can hear. Let's create our precious memories together. Thank you. Wow, wow. Thank wow. you so much. Wow. That's the artistic side of you. <laughs> yeah, person. actually, it's a first prize winner just so today. You after a spoken you. word artist, you know, spoken <laughs> in Chile. <laughs> oh Thank my you. God. Great, one, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. My God. Brilliant, brilliant. It's yeah. stupendo. Brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everyone. It. it is a pleasure always to share a wonderful um, piece for you all. I am so honored and grateful for every one of you. Thank you so much. Oh it is God. a soulful delivery also, you know. Each line, you are living through the line, actually. Thank you. You rendered it. Wonderful rendering also. Thank you. The light coming in the face like the sun. The light is coming <laughs> in your face and the smile. Like like the sun and moon, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Brilliant, brilliant. Wow. Really. Ratan Goshar, yeah. Curly hair. <laughs> Please grab your mic. Good evening, good evening. Yes, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Ah. Uh, uh... Thank you. Uh, once again, I got connected. <laughs> and I don't know, uh, is there any theme or something? Any theme? Uh, um, any there would not, if we, yeah, if, if there is a theme, then you would not be laughing like, like this. <laughs> everybody, is, uh, everybody is reading love poems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reading their love poems. Okay, uh, let me try uh, to read a poem. Mm. Entitled Gypsyland. Okay. Uh, Gypsyland. Uh, this is a poem from the same book uh, that is to be published very soon. I'm working on it. 
by this year, I'm trying to publish it. Uh, but being busy for, with <laughs> some other works, uh, namely uh, prose works, uh, I, whether I will be able to complete this book or not, but I'm trying my little best. What about Gypsyland? It's another poem uh, based on history. Once again, I'm coming back to history. Uh, this year, uh, history, <laughs> actually, uh, this year, on the um, last year, I worked on uh, love, a book published uh, probably in 2020, My Love, a series of love poems. And then I worked on a particular book uh, on eco criticism. Uh, and the book published in 2021, probably, containing 100 poems. And this uh, book will contain, I think, uh, more than 75 poems, expecting so. Still, I'm working because the poems are ready, but uh, number of uh, many works are there, like formatting and other things are there. No, so I've, I've been working on that, and thinking to send to the publishers very soon. So the Gypsyland, <laughs> another book is coming. Also, you know very well, and I uh, uh, also posted in my timeline. Uh, it's a short story book because uh, containing ten short stories of mine. Uh, this uh, such stories are very different and uh, another good news to uh, share with you out of 10 short stories four short stories to be um, sent to um, you know, mumbai um, film house uh, i have so far uh, talked to some production house so let's see as a matter of luck after all <laughs> If, uh, and I am also uh, shifting my mind uh, from uh, poetry is in my blood, but uh, prose, uh, I, I love very much. Uh, another uh, fiction is also coming, I don't know. So let's see Gypsyland. Uh, once again, Gypsyland is based on, once again, on the refugee, refugees of East Pakistan who were, uh, compelled to leave their land. So gypsy land. The land of love and peace. The land of love and peace. Just slowly occupied, burned and killed in the hands of gypsies. Just slowly occupied, burned and killed in the hands of gypsies. Once there was the smiling sun from the east. Once there is the smiling sun from the east, slowly being stabbed by the atrocities of messy beasts. Slowly being stabbed by the atrocities of messy beasts. The moonlit night is to please the soothing hearts. The moonlit night is to please the soothing hearts. Slowly they were chopped off and banished in an unknown Western part. Houses, temples, rivers and lands, bloody by night and day. Houses, temples, rivers and lands, bloody by night and day. Men in memories, men in memories slowly, shadowed by Meghna Penny and Padmas Clay. Many memories slowly shadowed by Meghna, Fanny, and Padma's play. A few could crow. A few could crow. I think a too few could crow. Though by the wounded, abundant roots. A few could crow. Though by the wounded, abundant roots. Swimming, swimming, swimming. The fearfully fearless streams of Padma, they all drowned. They all drowned from the floating boat. Years and years passing and temporary tents in awe and woe. Years and years passing in temporary tents in awe and woe. If there is any sudden storm, 
if there is any sudden storm blowing them another blow panics panics palpable fright darkened all the alien hearts panics panics palpable fright darkened all the alien hearts the memories of the dreadful nights the memories of the dreadful nights still storming the floating hearts the memories of the dreadful nights still storming the floating hearts none knows why the last breeze none knows why the last breeze chewed chewing all the roots and creeks when they envision those dead hearts of 1946 when they envision those dead hearts of 1946 wonderful sir thank you thank you prasanna ji for giving me this opportunity to read this poem from this book but uh, we would uh, we would certainly uh, yes, come back to you to you know <laughs> get to know more about you know the one which is releasing the title you know by we will like to go deeply about that you know <laughs> you could have that <laughs> discussion on that but yes uh, let's move on and uh, let's call upon our next poet uh, who is a, you know ardent lover of literature lakshman rao uh. wow sir very good evening good evening sir i believe like i have missed so many uh, so many uh, seasons sort of thing like so many weeks so after so many weeks i'm back with the bang I hope so. So I'm just coming up with a slight one small poem, the past and the present. I just titled it now. Okay. Otherwise, it was just blank poem. Nothing springs from scratch. For every phase, lead a transition into transforming and transporting into a new level of the experiences and the lessons learned from the previous spring steam to all splendid seasons. you are a no voice as long as you feel to be as a noise is while you are a seasoned skill player of life's match no matter at what age and which stage you are in no matter at what age and which stage you are in navigating the voyages move metamorphically metamorphically once inclination to move into a space of candidness despite the experiences of once total past comes into the presence of the mind and the very existence of me despite the experiences of from one's pure past comes into the presence of the mind and the very existence of me for the pain of the past is the profound of the future for the pain of the past is the profound of the future breathe in from very tall cease to be breathe in from very tall cease to be to hold in to inhale breathe in from where it all cease to be to hold to inhale or start from where you have felt nothing to flow to exhale or start from where you have felt nothing to flow to exhale thank you so this is a short poem uh, composed in terms of a sonnet the past and the present wherein uh, you might have got the feel of it the gist of it like the true past experience how we enter into the present and the, how we create into the future it's like a transformation to, from the one phase to the another phase uh, from transforming transmuting and uh, transforming into worlds all together so that's how it came that's profound sir as always you know you put across your you know views in the poetry yeah. I bring in all the complexities. That's where, like, uh, when when people uh, bring in all such uh, subtle nuances of simple things into poetry, I feel like why is that? I'm so complex or compound sort of a creature, creative creature, not trying to bring in all the, the small things into poetry. I don't know why, but it, it happens. Like, it differs from person to person or a poet to poet, and the, what they love to write is what they love to read. so that comes into a picture that's what i feel so yeah uh you are free to you know react on anybody if you could here <laughs> <laughs> i am a complex creature all that i guess 
No, no, you're a very, very nice man. man. You're a very nice man, and I love your work. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Lanterns. Thank you, sir. It's a deep poem <clears throat> which yes. gives food for thought. Yeah, yeah. You know, very profound. Pain yes. of past, profound of future. Yeah. The pain of the past. Um, the it sort of, of opens your mind and start creating thoughts in your mind yeah. about yeah. how you can uh, sort Once of you. navigate the past pains and try to make your life more calm, more peaceful for the future. Future. How you how you how you take it forward for the future? Yeah. Wonderful. That line is uh, it's a beautiful line. I think. The pain of the past is the profound of the future. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes, That's why I quoted some, it. Some lines, some lines, so they, you feel like uh, they are quoted. Yeah, quoted lines. They come in. They just come in. Like you, you just can't create a quote in between a line. They just flow. That's it. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah. Spontaneous Thank overflow. <laughs> Spontaneous Thank overflow. you, ma'am. Thanks for having <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Keep smiling always. Don't be serious. You know, we're yeah. always, you know, you should not <laughs> being, say, being a smile. Uh, there is a spiritual uh, the saying that, you know, you should not uh, show your seriousness of face and uh, to the public <laughs> or when, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's not like, no, no, no uh, don't take uh, it. Note, <laughs> well, well, on this note, I would like to say this word, as I, uh, I've been proposing on poem. The cosmos has its sense of humor besides its sagacity of seriousness. There's a line here which I'm writing the next poem. The cosmos of its sense of humor, sorry, the cosmos has its sense of humor besides its sagacity of seriousness. <laughs> In the sense, like it, it, both it has, it has humor as well as seriousness, both balanced together. Yes, exactly. Because, so, what, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, I believe Landon said has. Uh, uh, no, no, that's quite, you know, I, that's perfectly I totally you, agree. You, you need to have a balance. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, Landon, sir. Go ahead, sir. Say something. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And so you have a John Cleese in India? Pardon, sir? A John Cleese or Mr. Bean? Any Anything like that in India? They're comedians. Yeah, yeah, we have several comedians here, <laughs> but every language, every language theater has their own comedians here. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for your shining in. And now let me move. Oh, <laughs> join my our lively poet. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> the place where you should be, Anmesh. <laughs> Anmesh. Unmesh Mahitkar, my brother. Yeah, go ahead, sir. This mic is yours. Oh, thanks, thanks, Prasanna. That was too quick, my friend. Just give me a second. But I am ready for that. A poet should be always ready. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Okay. Uh, Prasanna, uh, I can go after the next one. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Sometimes sure. poet. Okay, <laughs> now let's ready. jump on to your next poet. <laughs> Who writes in uh, who writes folk songs? Is ever lovely, love, lovely singer. Uh, he writes in Telugu, English, Hindi as well. Renu Kuntla Murali. Sir, turn on your mic. Hello. Hello. Sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Go ahead, sir. Sir, good evening, all. Good evening, sir. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, perfect. Go ahead. Sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. This I am in the journey. So my title of the poem is Book is Three, sir. sir. I'm not able to say, as in the words of John Milton, a good book is the priest's life, blood of a master spirit, embalmed and treasured upon purpose to a life. Beyond life, life is a joyful when we enjoy reading books with love and interest. 
interest must be created by one's individual and one's enthusiasm. Reading books. Books are the lights of the wisdom. Books are the lights of the wisdom. Books are the colors of the words. Books are the lights of the wisdom. Books are the colors of the words. Books are the heaven of the love. Books are our bows of friends. Books are the heaven of the love. Books are our blows of friends. Friends may stay with us for a while, but books stay with us eternally. Friends may stay with us for a while, but books stay with us for eternal. Books stay with us for the rest of our lives. Books stay with us for the rest of our lives and end each our attitudes in positive moods and develop the knowledge. As knowledge is power, as knowledge is power. Let us habituate reading books. Books is a precept. Books is a precept. So this is a poem in English, sir. If you give me permission, I would like to read in Telugu, sir, please. Uh, please, sir. May I proceed, sir? Please, please, please. Okay. Kamani minchina vayadu antu ledu, kopani minchina agni antu ledu. Kamani minchina vayadu antu ledu, kopani minchina agni antu ledu. Alochana kanna achana pradhanam, Matala kanna chesal pradhanam. Alochana kanna achana pradhanam, matala kanna chesal pradhanam. Manchu chesina pudu, Santosha Muntundi, Tapu Chesina Pudu, Chala Badun Tundi. Manchi Chesina Pudu, Santosha Muntundi, Tapu Chesina Pudu, Chala Badun Tundi. Ananda Manali, Madranga Marchunu, Castal Manali, Balanga Unchunu. Ananda Manali, Madranga Marchunu, Castal Manali, Balanga Unchunu. Akuchata Pindega, Akuchata Pindega. Sajjanal sikku padu, Durjanal uttam luga, Paiki natishtum tadu. Sausiliyam yeppudu, Musige sukkum tundi. Sausiliyam yeppudu, Musige sukkum tundi. Dushiliyam yeppudu, Vesham maastu undi. Sahasincha dhairiyamu, Rettim pavu tundi. Sahasincha dhairiyamu, Rettim pavu tundi. Mana atma sairiyamu, Abhruddin istundi. Atma Sairimu, Abruzin is Tundi. So thank you very much, sir. Asanakumasa. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful, sir. All the poets. Wonderful, sir. This poem literally translates the Hindi version of, you know, you could take it as a Hindi version of Garma Sudan Kapoor's poem, you know, and that's, okay. yeah. So that can I translate the English? The Telugu no, it's poem? okay, sir, sir. Time, you have a line okay, of Okay, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank because I'm in Germany, I could not touch anything early. I'm sorry, yeah. sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Nah. Thanks, sir. One and thank, thank you, sir. Now over to Unmesh Moe, sir. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And uh, Murli ji, that was amazing because uh, I, though so I don't you, understand, uh, do, don't understand Telugu, but uh, I did understand the Sanskrit words in there, right? Sahas, Bahiriya, and I was able to make out what exactly it means. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Okay, so this is something which I, you might have, a few of you might have heard it, but I am trying to write a bit differently, experimenting, which I do always. Here we go. <clears throat> I am standing, <clears throat> I am standing alone on the bank of the river. There are steps leading to the river, blue colored, empty benches in waiting for a company. On the right, there is an old bridge. Adjacent to it is the towering new bridge overshadowing the old. These are difficult times for things that are old. No repairs, just replacement is the mantra in vogue. I saw a man walking on the river. He was not gliding, but walking. The river is not in a pristine condition. The water is green, 
I can see green and yellow plants floating. They are trying to put river into submission. But how can a man walk on the river? The bypassers were not surprised. They were looking at the river as if nothing has had happened. As if walking on the river was as common as walking on the street. Is it possible that he was seen only to me? The rest of the world is oblivious to the man walking on the green river. Or is this the ghost on the bridge they can't stop talking about? Or am I looking at an alien, a writer to the core? I like this idea. <coughs> or is this quantum mechanics? Somebody walking somewhere and appearing at another place at the same time. Now let's not stress about the quantum mechanics or cat in the box experiment. I wave at the river walker. The river walker waves back. He seemed to be surprised, happy, and scared at the same time. <coughs> surprised that someone saw him. Happy that he is no longer a secret. Scared that he is no longer a secret. Slowly, he disappears into the green river. One day, the river will disappear. The man walking on the river dies with the dead river. Killed by men walking on the street, driving a car, sitting on the bench, you and me. All of us. All of us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Oh my God. She's so thoughtful and thought provoking, I would say. Oh my God. Uh, as you said, began the beginning. Observational poem. He doesn't usually write observation. It started as an observational poem, neatly done, and then with such a strong ending. Amazing. Exactly. So. I mean, I found it very captivating. I loved your colorful descriptions. Wow, Unmesh. Very colorful poems, sir. Quite different from you, know. The other Unmesh is not here, but here is a. Person looking at the grim reality in all its, you know, harshness and ugliness, ugly, ugliness. You know, the river walker, pungent realism, a different masterpiece from you, Unmesh. Something that is shocking our conscience, because that's what is awaited for humanity. Because we are rash and reckless, not caring for nature. Wonderful. Amazing poem, Ummash, amazing. Amazing poem, Wonderful, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ummash, sir, again. Uh, now, let me call upon Santosh Kumar Pokharel, sir, who is a, you know, multilingual poet, I would say. <laughs> Namaskar to everybody. Namaskar. I greet you all from Kathmandu, Nepal. Thank you, Prashanna, that uh, you have put your all energy running this big project where you have united the world poet in one platform, I appreciate you. Today, I would like to read out my poem entitled, The Fire. Generally, my poems are dedicated to the word peace, love, and beauty, and the Russian and the Ukrainian war has hurt me a lot, not only me, but most of the peace-loving poets across the globe. The fire. 
The smoke was rising inside the green leaf womb. He burst out with no watch. This forest is on fire the day. Since the womb itself had ignited, the fetuses are burning incessantly in this cold earth. The smoke was rising inside the green leaf womb. He burst out with noise. This forest is on fire this day since the womb itself had ignited. The fetuses are burning incessantly in this cold earth. Our skies, yeah, our skies are covered with smoke. Our brains are also covered with smoke. What is what of smoke to aspire? Someone tell to put out the fire. Our skies today, yeah, our skies are covered with smoke. Our brains are also covered with smoke. What of smokes to aspire? Someone tell to put out the fire. Wish the hills had bent. Wish the hills had bent, but they are not going to. The forest have been forsaken. The greenery is gone. The leaves have been burned to ashes. Now be more. You may pray even the roots of the trees are shaken today. I'm watching. I'm watching this with all my pain. Who oh, is not a dead yet? Listen to my poem again. I'm watching this all with pain. Who oh, is not a dead yet? Listen to my poem again. Listen to my poem again. Thank you. Thank you. I wish your prayer be heard, sir. Such a nice poem. Thanks for your presentation, sir. Thanks for coming. Now let me call upon <laughs> yes, sir. Mentor, I would say, <laughs> Dr. Rupali, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Prasanna. I'm so sorry. I, you know, I've been not too well with a terrible cough for the last so many months. Uh, this book has just been released, and you are in there, and Molly is there, and that's why I'm showing it off. Uh, this is the book on food and the memories of food. Uh, we also, in May, brought out a book on uh, celebrating the armed forces, in which uh, Colonel Gopal Parudhani has written, and Prasanna has. I think you have also contributed. And um, what anthologies do for editors is that we, uh, you know, come to know so many wonderful poets. It's like, you know, what you're having. So uh, it's so nice to be in touch with you all. Uh, I live in a, a country where, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, many religions that are uh, followed. And uh, this forum, especially, I find, has a certain amount of kind of a religiosity. I won't say that we follow any religion, but there's a religiosity, a spirituality, which comes with our desire uh, in the Fertile Brains Forum as this wonderful objective of bringing peace and harmony through so many of us. Now, I'm going to read a poem. You know, in India, we live in very congested cities, but the congestion itself helps us because I wake up to the azan, you know, in the masjid, in the mosque, Early morning, I, I wake up to the call of the, to the faithful, you know, uh, when Allah's name is taken. And then I hear the temple bells. I hear the church bells ringing. And, you know, it's such a wonderful, uh, you know, thing to be able to do that. And the poem I'm reading uh, is uh, called Resurrection. It's an autobiographical one. Uh, some years back, not many years back, I had a terrible accident in which I broke 
all my bones, okay? Um, only my, I think my brain is sticking, but I broke all my bones. And this poem is called Resurrection. Um, I am by birth a Hindu, but I worship, uh, you know, my father told me that I must go to any house of God and say my prayers. That's what he wrote to me on my 17th birthday. Go to any house of God. And uh, this poem is called Resurrection, and it's a, it's a true uh, story. It's very short, but I'll read another one also today. Uh, Resurrection, uh, a frothy sea uh, rocked endlessly against the shore. A road, like the Mumbai Marine Drive, ran along. Many floral arches awaited somebody. I stopped in wonder, who was coming? In the distance, the sun rose above a small hillock encircled by the sea. Many voices were singing, hallelujah, hallelujah. It was dawn and it was Easter. I wasn't dreaming, it was a vision. That day, my broken bones began to heal. It was months since I flew off that roof and fell like Icarus. I knew Christ had touched me. I was Lazarus. I had risen from the dead. It was palpable and real. I could feel healing happening. It was a miracle. The Lord had touched me. And this is so true. I walk around now because Christ actually touched me and healed me that day. I could hear, I could feel my bones healing. And this is what God is to us, uh, to me, that, you know, today we are all here with different names, but we are human beings and people. And uh, there's a lot of love poems today. And uh, there's also about old age and the old man on the, on the green river, not the blue river, the green river. Now this poem uh, is called You Forever. You know, when we, when we talk of love, we only think of young people. We always think that only young people can love. This poem is written by an elderly woman to her beloved, and it is called You Forever. My Parkinson touched hands tremble now, as they did then so long ago with the magic of touching you. The twilight in my cataract misted eyes suffuses with vibrant colors, memories aglow with purple passion. Then too, beloved, my lungs had failed me. Then too, I had believed I would die. Rebellious as always, my defiant soul could not and would not grow old. Thus I am, my love, still bright-eyed, my dark stresses ignoring the irrevocable shades of gray fall softly over my mind. Aging ventricles strenuously pump red hot blood till myocardial spasms forever stills the flutter on my love crazed heart. Thank you. So this is a song of an elderly woman who has loved and continues to love her beloved. Yes, wonderful man. First was uplifting and second was, you know, uh, <coughs> You know, I don't know. <laughs> it reminds me of my father who was so he was down with uh, Parkinson as well. You know, uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Truly, you are coming a poem. Sorry, I cannot be on screen, but I think you can hear me. Rupali ji, have your first poem actually touched us like anything. See? Irrespective of caste, creed, or religion, the godliness is the same, the essential God in whom we trust and what miracles come out, out of our faith. First poem. Second also, it is so touching and overwhelming. Thank you. Thank you for those brilliant pieces. That is what I do. Wonderful. Wonderful, Rupali. Wonderful. Awesome poetry, Rupali ma'am. The first one was very nice. Yeah. You know, it was a very secular poem that your father taught to just go to it's anyone's house. I would say. Yeah. Yes. Just to go to anyone's house who prays to God. It's very, very open-mindedness yes. of your father. Thank you so yes. much for sharing that. 
Even the second one was nice, ma'am. Thank you for sharing both. Very uplifting. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. We have jo been joined by our cultural manager from Romania. It's been a very long time, a very long gap. Uh, it's, it's been a consistent, you know, uh, supporter of the yes. actions. Mashia Dandata. Mashia, kindly turn on your mic and video. Were you able to hear me, Prasanna? Yes, ma'am. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Marcia, you're on my, you're on, kindly turn on your mic and uh, video. Marcia Dandata. Okay, let me call upon Bizo Prince. Bizo. Yes, thank you, Kumal, <laughs> and uh, thank you all my friends uh, in the world. Yeah, today, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. <clears throat> Are they going on this? The omelets uh, sell. You can fill Caesar with one and a box with a all a little broken broom for the newly born. If you buy flare light be cleft the dome, uh, the dome's day sky, the echo pronounce one right out in Sodom. Bizo, are you there? Uh, the second. Shnia, Shnia, ne, ane tisla. To my father, uh, Victor Cohen. Peace. The dove at grains of. Uh, tranquility that I dispressed in the world and flew to foretell peace. And uh, the church, uh, this is the last, the last, wait, wait a minute. Black and white at Mol Shilshom Cafe. Blackish yacht sight white end. Chips are set alight in the dead stone. Pink is hidden in the Olo wrapped in four scarves, dipped in oil for anointing. The moon louts. Amen. Thank you, Adekorn, Israel. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> As always, you know, present short and sweet poems. Loudly having you around. Uh, we have, we have, we have with us Marcia, but he's not responding. But I think we have lost. But not least, 
we have Jennifer with us. Uh, Jennifer, you're welcome. Everybody, uh, I'm going to do two poems, which I did yesterday at On Meshes. The first one is a new one, which I wrote yesterday um, for the men, since I saw her that it was men's day or men's year, um, titled Needed. Man, without you, where would women be? We need you like the earth needs rain to grow the plants. We need you to give us love, to plant your seed which grow into kids, linking us to you all eternity. And we need their strong shoulders to lean on whenever we women are not feeling strong. And without you, mothers would not exist. Man, you are indispensable. Man, we women only request you to always treat us in the loving care, whether or not your children are. Second poem at the beginning of the end. This moment, this year is the beginning the end. In now and then a time we know not when. Do you want to climb the social ladder feeding your fans daily, weekly, pictures and words to boost a growing ego? Deep down, you know, I know, we know. You are not really an egoist. Tempting temptation, I on digital adoration, daily, hourly, quickly scanning your fan post, shocked, read, nexism, mobbing, suddenly realizing it's not all fans of yours who make their way onto your blogs. Their words creating fogs rain, your eyes blurred airs of desolation. Don't let your mind betray you, forcing you to entertain suicidal thoughts. Blot them out. They are not worth it. Live for yourself. Ignore their selfishness. Live for the Almighty. Faith can give you courage, peace of mind. Live to be true to yourself. They are not worthy of you abandoning you. Wow. It again. It again. Serious and thought provoking, I would say. Wow. Brilliant. Thank you. First was the dedication towards man for the man, and second was, you know, for suicide, you know. That's wonderful, man. Really, I think we should have a seminar and have a, we also should you know take uh, students <laughs> in <into> a <our> politics <laughs> seminar. You know, it's like you know. <laughs> no, seriously, we are, so so many and kids also we, are have, we are discussing the serious topics, <laughs> themes, and you know through a poetic medium and poetic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yeah, there are so many people committing suicide through mobbing online. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really sad. And then most of them mm -hmm. are actually teenagers or even children younger than 12. You know, exactly. so. and, uh, the many, many, many of, you know, awareness drives are being, you know, held and uh, through by government, private agencies and NGOs. But yes, a lot to be done. Many reasons attributed to it, but yes, something. <laughs> Masha, if you could just turn on your mic and uh, video, if you could. I mean, you're there. <laughs> you, you, Marcia done that. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh... Anyway, let's end up the show. I think, I mean, permit, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, Sanna, can I please ask you to read your poem also? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm uh, Because, <laughs> because I'm not. It's I'm a bad term. Be, <laughs> be the puppeteer, you know, you're the one who's making us dance you know? <laughs> to your tune. Nini, uh, 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 here it goes significance. I tried, I tried to hold peace 
it was shattered into pieces. Vanished to be nowhere to trace, yet I strived to find where it is. I went behind and asked the breeze of discordance, why doesn't it make the way for serenity of shores? To which peace in hiding retorted by saying, what's wrong with you, with you humans? You went on spoiling the calmness. Now you are crying bloody tears. Come on, you perverted man. Open your eyes. It's time to realize the significance of a unified alliance. That's the end of it. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the peace poem. Broken. Peace broken <laughs> into pieces. <laughs> huh? Peace broken into pieces. Yes, ma'am. And we are. And we are fighting for peace. <laughs> exactly. Wonderful. Scared. Wonderful, Prasanna. I Thank see you. all the wonderful certificates you get from all over the world. You know, so many people listen to your poetry and we don't get to. You know, you try to escape. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, let me, I'm just, I'm just uh, taking the points from you all and I'm just, you know, taking, learning. So I'm just a beginner. Thank you. So that is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, so, thank you so much. Thank how you. much, uh, you know, how much love and uh, beauty you bring to this on Sundays for all of us. You know, it's a prayer. It's like a prayer. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma With that, I would take you know uh, permission from you all to say uh, to sign off and to, uh, hope to see you on next Sunday. Maybe I'll probably will not be having in second next Sunday, but yes, other the, the other Sunday. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. bye, bye. Everybody. Thank you so much. All the poets. Thanks very much.